Hi everyone, my name is Sienna and this is Sienna Reacts. So today we are back with more Geography Now and today we have Togo. So I don't know <laughs> much about it other than it's close to Ghana and that's about it. <laughs> so I'm interested to learn more about it. Let's go ahead, let's get started. Uh, before we do, I do have a link to the original video in the description box so if you want to go and give that video a like or subscribe to the geography now channel that is up to do yes anyway let's go ahead let's get started super fascinated with togo mostly due to the unique way that it socially operates both in a contemporary and traditional sense it's so small it holds the key to so many variables that link not only west africa but africa to the rest of the world and the best part there are almost no annoying groups of tourists ruining it yet. I had to see this place for myself before making the episode. I had to go to Togo. Welcome to the Voodoo Coast. It's time to learn geography now! Howdy, I'm your host Barbs. Get your Geography Now merchandise and mugs or whatever at geographynow.com. It's not selling out if it's your brand. When uh, Tarchin says hi, this is only a cameo in the episode. So this episode is going to be kind of similar to the Switzerland episode in which I promised my Togolese friend Gilles that he could be in the episode. But the only way I could do that is if I promised to go to him in Togo. So no. I'm going to go to Togo and make a little makeshift studio in his house and film the Togo episode with him. He here I go! <gasps> ok, bonjour à tous. Après 20 heures de voyage, travers le monde, je suis arrivé. Maintenant, nous sommes ici à Lomé, Togo, et j'ai un invité spécial avec moi. Voici. Gilles Hello Comment guys hey. Bonjour à tous, je suis avec euh, Paul aujourd'hui mm -hmm. pour vous présenter <laughs> Geography Now Yeah, yeah. Woohoo Oh, and uh, yeah, you, you speak English too, right Yeah, yeah. sure, oh, sure. Oh, Okay, perfect yeah. Gilles is it. my Togo go-to go guy to. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, by the way, this is uh, Togolese brand I really like it, it's Moria So oh. if you guys are there, come and buy it Give a shout out to Moria And uh, that's his commentary, uh, fair use law, you can't sue us <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, uh Ah, on y va C'est parti Let's go C'est parti So Togo is unique because it's very small, but it has like a very advantageous position. Stuff is really starting to move and progress in Togo. Let's go to the globe first, shall we? First of all, the country lies in West Africa, sandwiched between Ghana, Benin, and Burkina Faso in the north, and the Gulf of Guinea to the south. The capital Lomé is on the coast, just on the border with Ghana at the town of Aflao. From there, Lomé's metropolitan area extends all along the coast for about 32 miles or 50 kilometers to the last town of Anejo before reaching the curiously marked border with Benin. See, you would think Togo would have the rest of this coast, but no, Benin took the extra 12 miles or 20 kilometers of beach, only about one third mile or one half kilometer wide, all the way up to the Mono River and called this glorious stretch Grand Popo. The history behind why Benin took this is shrouded in mystery, but what one theory I kept hearing in Togo was that there was a government official in Benin that had a mistress in Grand Popo, so he took the land to have access to see her. Not sure about the legitimacy behind that claim, but oh well, moving on. Lome has the biggest and busiest airport, Lome Tokwan, which acts as the main hub not not only for Togo, but for many travelers going to West Africa in general. In addition, Lomé is the home of Port Lomé, the new busiest shipping port in all of West Africa, which also is a free trade zone recognized by ECOWAS. We will explain a little bit more about this port later. From there, the country is divided into five regions stacked up vertically on top of each other like a totem pole. The second and third largest cities being Sokode in the central region and Kara in the Kara region. The second busiest airport also lies in the Kara region in Nyamtugu. However, it only serves the Togolese Air Force and government officials. So far, commercial flights are not available here. Togo used to have three main rail lines that were originally built during German colonial times, connecting Lome to Palime, Atakpame, and Anejo. Later, the French extended the Atakpame line to Blita. These lines were decommissioned in the 80s and 90s due to the larger development of paved roads, rendering the rail lines obsolete to the motor industry. You can still see the lines today barren and unused, though. And finally, way up in the northernmost point, there is a strange narrow panhandle with an incredibly skinny bottleneck corridor, only about 
about 130 meters wide. This is called the V. There are no roads that connect the rest of Togo to the western part of the salient, so you must go through Burkina Faso if you wish to visit. If you get access to Burkina Faso, Why? you can stop at this bridge right here at the narrowest part of the V and run across three countries all at once, which I did and documented. It was awesome. <laughs> we actually went to every region in Togo. We went up the N1 highway. Everywhere from the north side to the south side. Yeah, and uh, we actually went to the V. I actually crossed it and I documented it and Gilles was there. Well, the kids was there. Yeah, the kids were following. <laughs> the Togolese border guide, he helped yeah. us. Because yeah. they were like, oh no, you can't go into Burkina Faso. But then Gilles was like, eh, let's see if we can like convince. There's always a way. Dude. There's always a way. <laughs> that was intense. <laughs> yeah. Hey, okay. I've never been there, so it was a great moment for me so togo has quite an intense history yeah. and basically somewhere from the 11th to 16th century bunch of groups like away came away. from okay. the east side from nigeria part and mm. the mina and gun people from the, the west side and all those people mixed together to settle in the coast the coast side, the coast side. various european groups came in and they tried to take their chance at colonizing what is now togo first it was actually the danes and then the germans came in and today you can actually still Still see lots of remnants from the German colonization years. But then after World War One, it was like, okay, Germany, you lost. So we're gonna split up German Togo land. Britain gets the west side, it becomes part of Ghana, and I get the east side and call it Togo. Hey guys, uh, might I interest you in this uh pamphlet that suggests that we take over instead? Yeah, even Czechoslovakia had a moment where they tried to jump in and take their step at Togo. Togo is a very important country in Africa, especially the capital Lomé. Lomé. Yeah. It was where the Lomé <laughs> Commission was signed, uh, right. which was trade the aid agreement. Like Lomé, the... Never mind. And between EU in, and other 71 countries. It has the headquarters of ECOWAS, the West African Development Bank. Also at nearly 70 meters, Port of Lomé is the only deeper water port in West Africa that can accommodate new generation vessels. On top of that, MSC, the world's largest shipping line, just bought the Bolloré African Logistics Company. This makes them the new busiest port in West Africa. They actually beat out Lagos, Nigeria. Lagos. You beat them. You beat Lagos. And you only have like... <laughs> yeah. what, I love how he's like, yeah. You have less than one-tenth of their population. One-twentieth of their population. Oh, really? um, I mean, oh, you kind of took the number one spot, but I'm kind of cool with it because it was like super busy and super congested. So you actually helped me out. So thank you. And on top of that, Lome is also the site commission the first landing point for Equiano subsea cable by Google. The first landing point in all of Africa, which helps them build up their digital capacity. Very busy. A lot of so stuff happening. So much is happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Togo usually ranks high in the safe to visit index. The only issue I'd say is the administrative formalities sector of your country. I don't want to get too much into it, but basically everything from the visa to the extension of the visa after six days that they don't tell you at the airport, the paperwork, everything, it's kind of a nightmare in any case when you come <laughs> togo has a lot of nice places we actually saw some of them yeah the one unesco site we have is the tamberma castle they are located in the north part of togo you also have things like the monument de l'independence yeah. lomé had the sacred heart cathedral la sacré Coeur. And it's next to the Grand Marché or something? Yeah, it's like next to the... I tried to bargain with some guy. He tried to sell me a necklace for like $80. I'm like... <laughs> I brought him down to 14 They also have lots of museums, like the International Museum of the Gulf of Guinea and the National Museum of Togo. We also have the, the Palais de Lomé, where like they kept all the artifacts. Yeah, yeah, le Chateau Vial. Chateau, Chateau Vial. Vial. That's a cool one. Slave House of Togo. And uh, there are so many cool waterfall sites, especially the one at Cascade Pime. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, Togo has so many cool natural sites so many of them and that's a perfect time to transition into togo is one of the smallest country in africa yet it's packed with natural diversity oh lots of diversity so here's how it kind of works out First of all, despite Togo being small, they actually have quite a range of geographic regions. In the south, the country is lush and part of the broader Guinean forest eco-region that extends all across West Africa and gets some of the highest concentrations of rain on the continent. Here you can also find the largest inland body of water, Lake Togo, which is also where the country gets its name from. From there, a little up north, you reach the Togo mountain range that bisects the country and where you can also find the highest peak, Mount Agu, at 986 meters high. Just east of this range, you can find the longest river with an extension fully within Togo, 
the Mono River that drains into Benin. Go up a little further north, you reach the Tableland Plateau, and in this area, the land starts to get dry and turns into savanna. This area is also where you can find the source of the longest shared river, the Oti River, that creates part of the border with Ghana. The northern area is also subject to the Harmattan winds, in which dust storms pummel down from the Sahel region of Africa during the dry season between November and March. Finally, although Togo has some beautiful beaches, it is advised not to swim in the open ocean because much of the Guinea Gulf coast is speckled with dangerous riptides, and it is only advised to swim in shielded or enclosed beaches. So here's, we actually went to the top of Mount Agu. <laughs> yep, Mount Agu. It was pretty cool, it was beautiful. So I'm like, hey, why don't I get a drone of this? It looks oh. nice, I brought my drone. Apparently, uh, we were arrested and detained at a police station for like four <gasps> hours. Four hours. <gasps> and uh, the police ended up uh, taking my drone and not giving it back. I know it's at the Direction Nationale de la Gen Gendarmerie. <laughs> Nationale de la Gendarmerie. Building DO DOE, I know they're holding my drone over there. But uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I broke Togolese law. End of the story. End of the story. It's always the picture and drone stuff. Like, like, what? Don't you guys want oh people to take pictures and videos of Africa? Like, you have to follow the law. Yeah, but it's like, sorry guys. We, we, we want to share Africa to the world. Like, ah, oh, stop stopping us sharing. Anyway, enough about my international crime record. So one thing that sets uh, Togo apart from other West African countries is their intense sense of independence when it comes to running their economy. Things like opening up a foreign uh, franchise is incredibly difficult. Okay, this is why you will not find any fast food like McDonald's or Domino's Pizza or whatever. Yeah. These Togo guys are serious. Instead, everything is like a domestic brand. Champion, mm -hmm. It's our own grocery. The fast food we have, Akif. The questionable logo of uh, standard, standard food. food. <laughs> to explain a little bit more about the economic standpoint of Togo, Noah's not here. We don't know who's gonna fill in. Uh, this was filmed out of sequence, so whoever it is, uh, spin into it. Oh, okay, so I guess I'm Noah today. Yeah, he has a really busy schedule and it's really hard to get him. Ah. So, Togo's land has been through quite a bit. During German colonial times, the trains would haul things like cocoa, cotton, phosphates down to Lomé for shipping. For the longest time, starting in the 70s, phosphates used to be their largest commodity. The biggest issue Togo was facing, however, was their administrative structure that made growth a little more complicated. In 1979, they turned to the IMF and agreed to adjust their system for loans. This included things like eliminating state monopolies, privatizing enterprises, and simplifying taxes. Later, they would become the host to the ECOWAS, ECOWAS Development Fund and the West African Development Bank. This step gave Togo the new reputation of being a regional banking hub for all of West Africa. This move added a whole new industry folder to their portfolio. Now, granted, it hasn't always been the easiest transition, and it has come with its fair share of bureaucratic complications. Nonetheless, Togo has been able to grow substantially from a near completely agricultural dependent society, that's a lot of quotes, to an almost third of the labor force involved in services and industry. Usually that's a good sign. Oddly enough, despite being a regional transportation hub, Togo's tourism industry is relatively underdeveloped, ranking around 130th in the world with less than half a million visitors annually. Which is kind of crazy considering the cool nature of the spots they have. To talk more on that, here's Gary Harlow to explain, and I am out of here, and I'm Noah, and I'm strong. Hey guys, it's Caleb here. Blimey. Gary Harlow here. So, Togo, <laughs> being located in the Guinea Rainforest Tropic Zone, is structurally able to harbor a wide range of species. Nearly 200 mammal species and about 670 bird species have been documented here. Unfortunately, in the 90s, lots of bush animal poaching has led Togo's wildlife concentration to shrink. Now there's three national parks, 10 animal reserves, and 84 small forest reserves. The largest and most popular one being the Karan National Park in the north. Karan! Aerial surveys have been done and have shown that there are no longer any permanent lion or elephant populations in Togo. It's quite sad. Nonetheless, undulates still survive mostly in the northern savanna regions like bushbuck, reedbucks, cobs, gazelles, and hartebeests. My heart beats beats for the heart of beast. <laughs> Rainbow lizards and leaf-toed geckos are everywhere, even in cities. You can find them crawling around homes and shops. Remember you got a video footage in Somaliland of that rainbow lizard? Dude, it was bloody brilliant, wasn't it? That's the same one, yeah. That's the same one, yeah. really? And then you like dropped your camera. <laughs> I did. <laughs> and finally, in many of the bodies of water, most notably Lake Togo, you can find 
mud skippers. They're just skipping along on the mud, feasting on insects and worms, much like me in the early days of living with Paul. <laughs> That's it for me. And speaking of eating, I totally forgot to feed my kid. He's a great dad. <laughs> Well, that was pretty intense. Just like that time, I mashed up Fufu at Mama Basar's right, Fufu yeah. Bar. Uh, Fufu Abiba bar. is the nicest lady ever. Everybody loves her. Yeah, everybody, everybody loves her. To talk more about food, here's my friend, Maite. Maite. So. Hey everyone, I'm Maite, I'm Togolese, and I can't wait to tell you about the food we have in Togo. So first of all, like many other West African countries, Togo eats the common staples known as Fufu, which is mm. made in a variety of ways depending on which country you are in. But it usually includes mm, crushed yam, yam or cassava. In mm. Togo, it is usually the women's job to crush the fufu with large wooden vessels. However, in other countries like Ghana, it is the men's job. In Togo, however, we are known for akume. It's like fufu, but we add corn and sorghum mixture. Fufu is almost always eaten with stews and soups. Goat meat stew is probably one of the more popular ones, as is palm nut soup, boma desi, and okra. For breakfast, we usually have a krizubon, which is like a corn porridge with crushed peanuts on top. Or sometimes we enjoy a good boto coin. For brunch, the most popular dish is probably ayi molu, served with boiled eggs and a variety of deep fried meats and fried wagashi cheese. Now, of course, because of our history, you will see a noticeable influence of French cuisine in Togo. All of our bakery serves baguettes, croissants, macarons, and so more. For drinks, we love our bisap or hibiscus. Oh, yeah. And Hips so that be so palm liquor. You can find palm liquors in most bars. Okay, that's it for me. Hope you enjoyed learning about Togolese food. And I hope you get the chance to try some. Thank you, Maite. Yeah, thank you. And baobab fruit. Baobab I love that. fruit. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's weird. It's a fruit, but it's dry, dry inside. They crush it into powder, but when you add water, it turns brown. brown. This is I have never seen any country in the world with so many bars. Like <laughs> bars everywhere. Everywhere, <laughs> everywhere. And everywhere, even Christian or Muslim drinks. They all you drink. Will see, you will see like a church next to the uh, mosque and next to the bar. <laughs> we <laughs> even pass by by bar named Vatican Bar and also Muhammad Bar. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> Vatican okay. Bar and Muhammad Bar. Bars and religion, I feel like that's so indicative of Togolese culture. We kind of mix everything, like everything. I think that brings us to the people of Togo. Let's dive in, shall we? Togolese people. Okay, Gilles, what is a Togolese person? It's quite a heavy question. They don't like show off. They are kind of people, they like building their house instead of buying fancy car. Fancy or, clothing, yeah, fancy yeah, shoes. Yeah, they are yeah. modest. You're more likely to build a house than buy a flashy car or clothes. Hmm, that sounds like someone we've heard of before. Who was it? Yeah, it was me, your good old boy Vinny. Hey, uh, you, me, Togo, we should uh, hang out sometime. Generally, <laughs> Togo is divided in between traditional and less traditional style. Yeah, it's mm. a very interesting social atmosphere. Before we get into it, here's the demographics graph. First of all, the country has about 8.3 million people, and there are about 40 or more ethno-linguistic people groups in Togo, almost split evenly between the Bay language peoples and the Gur language peoples. Now, accurate numbers are hard to come by because much of Togo's tribal and ethnic groups have intermixed, and data is always conflicting with sources. I tried to do my best with the math, and the Bay-speaking peoples seem to make up somewhere close to about half of the population, whereas the second language family the Gur speaking group make up, I think, maybe a little less than the Bay peoples at around 45%. The largest ethnic group amongst the two families is the Ewe people that speak a Bay language at somewhere around. So, questions. So I, um, I knew a girl whose father was from Ghana, um, and he was from. They called it. They it, it was almost like a B sound, like the W almost sounded like a B. So whenever she said it, it almost sounded like like Ebe instead of like Ewe. So if if you are aware <laughs> of the correct way of like saying it, please let me know, because I like I like I know that it was spelled almost with like a W or like specifically i 
think that it was some it was actually like a, some German Dutch or like German letter is actually the correct way but like when they do like the EWE it's like um like to make it I guess like r like romanized or whatever um but yeah is it Ewe or is it Ebe let me know. Anyway. <laughs> Around one third of the population. After that, statistics show that the Kabye peoples that speak a Gur based language seem to be the second most populous group at somewhere around maybe 13%. From there, the third most populous group seems to be the Wachi, another Bay speaking group, at maybe 10%. The rest of the population is mostly Bay and Gur language groups, with about 4% other African groups like the Yoruba, and 1% of the population belonging to non African peoples, mostly Lebanese, Arabs, and a few Europeans, mostly French. So we use the West African franc as a currency. We use type C plug and we drive on the right side of the road. Mostly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, see this image here on the CFA West African franc? This is called a pristiform or a sawfish. It was based off of a Okay. brass weight that was used by the Ashanti, Ashanti people people. in Ghana. They used it mm -hmm. to kind of measure gold, gold dust. This was like a symbol of currency. So you took something from my culture as imagery on your currency, even though I'm not part of the currency union. Oh, come on, it's West Africa. We share a lot of social undertones. Stop talking. I mean, whatever. <laughs> so as we explained in the graph, there are about 40 different ethnolinguistic groups that have their own languages. From the north, you have the Dapam people, the Dapam, who speak the Moba, and mostly other languages. To get to Sokode, they speak uh, Kotokoli. And after to Kara, they speak Kabye. And down in Tulome, they speak uh, Ewe or Mina. Most Ewe. people will at least know okay. a little bit of Ewe throughout Togo. If not, the lingua franca is actually Mina. Mina, Mina is similar to Ewe, but then the Mina is a mix of the Gan language from Accra, Ghana. So it's a mm -hmm. mix, it's a Creole. Can Ewe people, Ewe people understand Mina? Yeah, the every people can literally understand me and they can. It's almost the yeah. same language. However, French is the official, official language. language. You'll see it spoken a lot at like banks or government yeah. buildings or whatever. Or if you just meet someone you've never met. The first language is French. Yeah. Okay, now religion. Now this is going to be a little tricky because it's hard to get exact numbers, but one thing that is globally known about both Togo and Benin is that they are the voodoo countries. Sources will always give you different numbers. Some will say that Christianity is actually the largest group. I've seen numbers go from like one third of the country to 45% of the country. And for Islam, I've seen it go from like 14% to 22%-ish. But between the two, the second most populous religion of the country is voodoo. Usually numbers average somewhere around one third of the country but I've seen it go as high as 51% being the major language it's it's really hard to decipher because there's there's a lot of religious syncretism yeah voodoo is kind of taboo in Togo compared to other countries like Benin it's kind of yeah. taboo so they won't say it openly say it openly but in Benin it's more Benin open. is more open yeah, yeah. and uh, you will notice pause okay so I do have a question about that because um I gotta say, okay, so I'm I'm Black American, but I'm assuming it's going to be for everyone, um, like from who is African descended in the Americas, right? So like we <laughs> we say, oh, I'm Christian, oh, I'm Muslim, oh, I'm you know this or that, right? But then there are very obvious <laughs> like like really really obvious things um that are actually callbacks to different um like ethnic groups in like africa or and have like other references than you know like like basic european european style um like religious practices right so like in the U.S., um, where I'm from, you know, there were things, um, I'm just gonna, like, I'm gonna put up pictures of something, so, like, there, like, there's, like, the, the catching, quote-unquote, catching the Holy Spirit, the Spirit, right? Which is not a thing in like the white churches or um, the that we have like praise dancers um, who usually you know like they're dressed in white, um, 
and they'll cover their hair and they'll like you know do dances and like that type of thing so I I think it's I'm a bit confused when it's said like oh it's taboo like is it taboo in the sense that you just simply don't say that it is voodoo but it has become part of you know the christianity or the um or like the like islamic faith that is practiced or is it kind of considered like it's its own individual thing and like we're not going to touch that at all i'm i'm always interested because there is no pure religion right all religion is is influenced by the the society <laughs> in, in which it's practiced right so i'm i'm interested like let me know if i'm making sense at all in togo though like sometimes you might see a sacrifice left in the middle of the street or like a public open area like we saw one at the baobab tree in kante like also uh lumi has the fetish market mm -hmm. one of the biggest not in not sexual fetish not okay. <laughs> i think it's the one of the biggest in west africa <laughs> Yeah. yeah. No, like the only one in base, uh, in West Africa. <laughs> Basically, over there is just the body part of animals. The animal there are uh, died naturally. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a voodoo pharmacy in West. They made um, medicine from the animal part. So I was told at this voodoo fetish market that the Hollywood stereotyped voodoo that has been perpetuated actually was kind of started by Haiti. Real voodoo yeah. doesn't even have voodoo dolls. <laughs> like, that was just kind of like a gimmick they used to scare off the white men or to sell off to, you know, gullible tourists that think it's so exotic. So <laughs> in any case, after independence, Togo has a lot to offer to the world and a lot of stuff is going on. So according to Togolese textbooks, they'll tell you that the very first president of Togo died of unknown causes, whereas an interim president took over and then there was a coup d'etat in 1963. So the coup d'etat was led by the Nyasingbe Eyadema, who was the longest serving African leader <laughs> in modern history, 38 years. Yeah until he died and his son Fo Nyasingbe took over. This is where the complicated topic of Togolese politics comes in. Because it's like, everybody could kind of see what was happening, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so during that time, then it was like, Okay, okay, I'll resign and run for office until we can all sort this out. <laughs> see, I told you, I got this. Mm. We're watching you intensely. It's a touchy subject with a lot of controversies, but you have to kind of admit he did kind of do some good things. Like he built a lot of roads, did a lot of trade deals uh, that brought a lot of business to Togo. Even the internet. Internet, yeah. yeah. Okay. Like... So, eh. <laughs> yeah. But there's a lot of discussion behind this and we don't have time. time. But one thing you do have time for is sharing for the local sports. Yeah. And with that, here's Art with the sports part. Hey guys, I'm here for the sports part. Yes, walking up steps is athletic too. It is. Walking up steps, walking up <laughs> steps is athletic. <laughs> Togo is active in so many ways and none more noticeable than wrestling. Every year in the north part of the country, they celebrate the Ivala Festival, which is sort of like a male rite of passage. Usually before wrestling, the competitors must complete a series of fasting and rituals involving scarification, animal sacrifice, and a pilgrimage across three mountains. Otherwise, like most countries on earth, Togo is obsessed with soccer or football. They made their first World Cup appearance in 2006 which was huge for such a small country. <laughs> they tried their best against powerhouses like Switzerland, France, and Korea. This guy, Emmanuel Adebayer, is probably the most well-known Togolese athlete ever. Togo has a few other notable athletes. Middleweight boxer Zafru Boloko was considered one of the top competitors in the super middleweight division in the 1990s. Tennis player Gerard Loglo made it to the Davis Cup in 1999. And to this day, dual French Togolese citizen Benjamin Bouc Petty is the only Togolese athlete to win a medal at the Olympics for Togo in men's canoe in the 2008 Beijing Olympics. This whole incident was kind of unexpected for Togo. Oh. It was a bronze, but they still won it. So they're like, hey, we'll take it. Why not? I'll put that in my back pocket. Yeah, and from there, with the help of Benjamin, canoe clubs were opened in Lome. And now Togolese people are starting to take more interest in the sport. Well, one thing I have an interest in is finishing my segment. So...
Okay. Thank you, Art. <laughs> yeah, Togolese people love athletics. Fun fact, in on weekend, every morning, uh, people like jogging together in groups, and they've been jogging uh, according to a rhythm. They go so early. It's like yeah, 4 a.m. 4 a.m. <laughs> well, to talk more about some of the routines and customs, here's Random Hannah to explain. <laughs> Hello everybody, I'm back and you can get a random Hannah shirt at geographynow.com woo, 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 woo. So first off, like other countries in Africa, Togo has quite a few constituent monarchs and chieftains. Mm. It's hard to get an exact number of how many there are and who exactly is in charge because most of them Rose. are just locally known but not well documented no. <laughs> for research access. What we do know though is that this guy is the current monarch of the Ewe people and probably is the most notable constituent monarch in Togo. The largest festival of the Ewe probably being the Agobozo no. Festival, which commemorates the escape of the oppressive king Agakoli so I. During festivals, the Togo people so perform confused. many traditional dances like the Abaza or war dance, the women's Atsia dance, and the Bobobo. That's my favorite, Bobo. Otherwise, in the town of Gliji, numerous people, and especially the Mina group, celebrate the Epe Epke Festival or Voodoo Festival, in which the traditional high priest reveals a stone that will predict the fate of the year to come based on the color. The Tem people in northern Togo have a fire dance ceremony in which they try to show how resistant their bodies are to fire by putting flames literally on their skin or in their mouths. Dang. Should I try it? Comment down below, yes or no. <laughs> so yeah, you can see how much of a mystic undertone much of Togo's culture is centered around. Togo is also heavy on the visual art scene. Artists like Soke Ador, whose work depicts the northern savannah culture of Togo, are adored nationwide. Paul Ai, the man who designed the flag, was also a famous artist and a sculptor. And everyone knows Togo is famous for their panier cloth, which was pioneered by the Nana Bend women. These female entrepreneurs became super rich in the 30s to 50s through textile print and the trade industry. Hence why they got their name Benz, because they oh. were the only people that could afford Mercedes Benz car. That's actually really cool. Go women, woo! So you can definitely <laughs> see that Togo is loaded with so much contrast and fusion, like in their music scene, which as you know, means unfortunately we have to go to Keith. Ugh. It's your favorite Florida man, Keith. I want to say thank you so much to everybody that wished me a happy birthday. Uh, oh, thank you for watching birthday. for over six years now of me being on Geography Now. And besides that, let's get into it. Togo. Wee! So, Togo is rich with traditional music. The three most well-known styles would probably be the Northern, Central, and Southern styles. It is often said that music in the North celebrates bravery, while music in the South is performed to release frustration or resolve conflicts. Sometimes music accompanies native rituals, just as the Tagawan dance, where the eldest son has to carry a heavy drum on his back to honor his passing father. Today's music scene is evolving, yet sometimes they still appreciate the old ways. No artist exemplifies this more than King Mensa, or the golden voice of Togo. He's probably one of the most famous Togolese musical artists. His music usually fuses contemporary beats and traditional undertones and lyrics in multiple languages. Every Togolese person will also know Bella Bella. She was a widely successful singer in the 1960s, creating numerous albums before she tragically died in an accident at the age of 28. Otherwise, today, Tofen is killing it. They've been nominated and won numerous awards like Best African Group and Best French Speaking Group at the MTV Africa Awards. Finally, Togo has one of their own metal bands, and we all know that I like metal. I'll be <laughs> honest, guy. I don't want to butcher the pronunciation of the band, so I'm just going to put it right here in this little box below. They kind of remind me of Sepultura, and if you're into that whole, like, uh, droney, drum beat kind of stuff, check it out. Anyways, everybody, that's it for me. I'm Keith. I hope you have a great day. Also, fun fact, I started my own YouTube channel, and you should go subscribe to it, and I would greatly appreciate that. I love you guys. Whee! Thank you, Keith. So yeah, Togo is definitely colorful <laughs> and vibrant in almost every possible way. Music, tradition, customs, culture, it's its crazy. You guys yeah, have so much. Yeah. It's a lot for such a small place. But one thing they have that's even bigger is their global outreach. Let's discuss that in... Togo is definitely connected to the world. Mm -hmm. I guess you could say Togo knows who to go to as their go 
two. two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, front, I get to do that. <laughs> okay, so here's the animation explaining. First of all, as part of la francophonie, Togo tends to prefer doing business with their French-speaking neighbors and communities abroad. The largest mm -hmm. abroad, of course, being France. France is the link that connects Togo to Europe, and many bilateral treaties and aid agreements have been signed after independence. France has a security and defense cooperation agreement, and typically sends detachments from Senegal over to Togo to help prepare for peacekeeping operations. In addition, most Togolese people have at least one family member that has either lived or studied in France. Togo is also part of ECOWAS and UEMOA, a regional bloc, which means they have a joint economic and customs union with 15 other West African countries, despite some of them currently being suspended, but nonetheless, joint union. This gives them the privilege to do things like easily cross borders, they share their currency with seven of these other countries, their trade policies are very loose and open, they have their own court of justice, peacekeeping force, and overall agree to cooperate amicably to the best of their ability. Now, when it comes to their best friends, it really depends on who you ask, but most Togolese people will probably say one of their immediate neighbors, Ghana or Benin. Ghana mostly because all along their eastern border they have Ewe peoples that are essentially the cousins of Togo's Ewe. In fact, Ghana actually has nearly twice as many Ewe's as Togo. There was a controversial moment in the 70s with the Togoland Liberation Movement in which Ewe peoples in both Ghana and Togo entertained the desire to unify under an ethno-nationalist state for the Ewe peoples. Later, the movement was repressed by the respective governments, but aside from that, Ghana and Togo cooperate very well in almost every other socioeconomic aspect. But then we get to Benin. These two I like to call the voodoo twins. Benin and Togo have so much cultural overlap. Benin's majority Fon peoples are essentially cousins of Togo's Ewe. They both share similar customs, traditional beliefs, celebrations. They've both been part of colonial history under the French. They intermarry quite often. These two get each other. In conclusion, Gilles, you are the Togolese guy. I'm gonna give it to you. Go. In conclusion, <laughs> even if it's not rewarding, we want to do everything ourselves as much as possible. We are smart, developing, and generally modest. And in the end, we may be small, but you can tell we have a big ambition. Yeah! Yay. <laughs> Jill, I think you made your country proud. I hope so. Thank you so much, so much. for being in this episode. Thank you for helping me while I was in Togo. Without this guy, I would be dead <laughs> and in prison. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Tonga is coming up next. Hey, that was cool. Okay. Um yeah okay so i guess i don't know i don't know much about the food but if there's like any food that's very very easy to make at home because I, I don't cook but i want to try you know um let me know uh i'm, I'm not making pounded yam that that's not gonna happen but like like a like a, a, su a soup or something like that or like a rice dish um yeah, let me know if there are any that you like recommend that take less than 30 minutes. <laughs> I don't cook. Oh my god. Anyway, let me know. Um and then also if you have like any um like musical recommendations. So usually I'm more of a like um kind of like an in like an indie into like an are like light r&b pop sound that's what i tend to listen to um for like afro beats type um i like uh like south soul which is from they're from rwanda i think if that's wrong i'm sorry <laughs> and then like like yemi holiday yemi holiday anyway um and then like tiwa savage and just you know like the popular people right but if there are any specifically that you have any recommendations for i'd love to hear it or like generally i guess i don't i don't really listen to french anything so if there are any um like saw like in french that you recommend i'd love to hear those as well um but yeah yeah let's go ahead let's end here <laughs> um but again the original video is down in the description box so please check that out if you would like they have a great channel um they're in they uh, have done all of these videos alphabetically um so they started out with the a <laughs> countries and now they're in the t's so there is lots and lots of videos if you want to go back and watch them um but anyway let's end here please like comment and subscribe and i'll see you next time okay so Bye-bye.